Rose, look. Rose looks. All troll grubs appear kind of samey, but this one has a familiar look about her. Asymmetric horns, one crescent, the other harpoon-like. A must mane of hair and a mischievous glint in her beady little eyes. Particularly, the one with seven pupils. Vriska? Pretty close. A reasonable genetic approximation. This brood has been utilizing a slurry consisting of genes from our original group of twelve trolls. Mostly this results in unique individuals, but sometimes very close copies occur, as with the case of ancestral descendancy. So... Riska would be this troll's ancestor? Yes. Wow. Rose, I think this is a sign. A sign of what? Haven't we been talking about adopting a grub? Eventually, yes, but a natural-born grub, don't you think it will be somewhat... awkward? Us raising a clone of your Sword of X? What happens when Vriska comes back? What do we say to her? Rose, Vriska is dead, so it doesn't really matter. Is she dead, though? Absolutely. There are two things of which I have no doubt. That you and I are going to be happy for the rest of our lives, and that we are never ever going to see Vriska again. Vriska and Vriska both start shrieking at a pitch John's only ever heard one time before. It was a sound that once accompanied the end of everything. A sound once heard the night he dreamt. In anime. Vrista runs both hands down her face, leaving long, dark streaks of blood. <sighs> I can't be here. Friska, wait, actually, I guess I shouldn't call you that? It might get confusing. What? Well, see, Rose and Kanaya's daughter is also named Friska. What? And since you didn't come to Earthsea with us, that means technically she was here first. So that would make you... Friska? <laughs> that's fucking unacceptable! Sorry, but I think that's probably just how it has to be. Rose stops <laughs> breastfeeding Briska and hands her off to Kanaya. Why do Rose and Kanaya have a daughter named after me? Oh, it's because they thought you sacrificed your life heroically defeating Lord English. So they found a baby clone of you and named her in your honor. Personally, I thought the whole thing sounded like bullshit, but you know, whatever makes them happy. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. Yeah, I know. I tried to tell them. Wait. We admire Vriska now? Why have we all ended up so unhappy and... twisted up? I got everything I wanted. Everyone got what they... what I thought they wanted. And that's just it, isn't it? The more I think about it, I'm the only factor that matters to anything. Whatever I did, or didn't do, just destroyed reality's ability to, like, substantiate itself or whatever. Like there's a bug in the operating system of whatever force in this world that regulates cause and effect. Everything's been unraveling. Nothing that happens makes sense anymore. And now I'm the only person out here who's even real at all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I've never seen a guy get his bulge all the way down his own swallow chute before. Wait, what? Good fuck. You actually think reality gives that much of a shit about you? Get real, Egbert. It's not like you're me. <laughs> okay, well, that's fair, I guess. Because I can't think of a single another motherfucker who could use a righteous dose of that sweet, sweet redemption right down the shame hatch more than Friska for fucking circuit. Gamzee suckles at his bottle and beams at her with the complacency of a man perfectly oblivious to the one-way ticket to the world of shit. His big mouth thus fought for him. What the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> I'll have you know I graduated top of my class <laughs> on my self-appointed pirate position, having little knowledge of naval ranks, and I've been involved in numerous ghost army campaigns and have over 300 confirmed kills. I feel like shit about it, but I fucking survived, and I am trained in Alternian warfare, and I am the top Briska in the entire Homestuck narrative. You are nothing to but just another target. I will wipe you the fuck out with the 
petition the likes of which have never been seen before on this earth scene. <laughs> Mark my fucking words. You think you can get away with saying that shit to my fucking face? Think again, fucker. As we speak, I am eight seconds from breaking contact with my last and dubiously existing shred of self-control across my think pan. So you better prepare for the storm, maggot. The storm that wipes out the pathetic little thing you call your life. You're fucking dead, clown. Uh, I said you gotta chill, yo. It's high time you got your redemption on. And you got to make some motherfucking amends to your tragic backstory. My what? Huh. Friska looks into his eyes. She beholds his serene expression and the casual sag of his soldier. His shoulders. His posture is so contemptibly flaccid, it's as if he's literally wilting. Her gaze travels to where his weird long fingers are wrapped around the curve of her shoulder. His hand is sticky for some reason. She notices a few strands of her black hair clinging to whatever heinous substance is coating his hand. It's an image so viscerally objectionable to her that she nearly vomits. After all she's been through today, this, this is the last goddamn straw. Her eyes fill with fury, with indignation, with vivid radiating malevolence, and then it finally happens. She just plain fucking snaps. <gasps> Don't you dare. <laughs> Vriska clenches her fists together and then slams them into Gamzee's nose, a brutal double axe handle right off the hook. His nose makes a crunching sound like someone just stepped on a pile of crackers. He stumbles backwards, cupping his palms over his face to catch the gush of blood. Fucking touch me! Vriska grabs him under the armpit and delivers a European-style uppercut with her bloody elbow. He expels a wheezy, guttered honk. It comes out slowly, mournfully, like a broken bike horn, getting backed over by the rear wheel of a hearse. EVER! She spins out from under his flailing arm and does a full 360 degree pirouette off the fucking handle to deliver a ruthless knife chop straight to the cartilage at the center of his chest, like a veteran butcher getting down to business. AGAIN! Gamzee tries to get his bearings, but Friska's spinning back in the other direction with the discus back elbow. Her elbow connects with his cheekbone hard enough that it shatters. A sharp tooth goes flying out of his puckered lips so fast that John has to take flight to avoid it. Vriska takes a crow's hop back, grounding herself to swing a lead-legged kick right into his chin. Gamzee goes flying into a nearby tree. The first branch splinters under the impact of his spine. He gets clotheslined backwards by the second one, spins around it, and face plants on a hard root under the tree. John winces, but not sympathetically. The impact was just that rough. That had to crack a rib or two. Friska stalks over to Gamzee and triumphantly lifts him off the ground, high above her head, only to drop him and slam her knee into his face again. His lip splits, staining her jeans bright purple. He's rolling from side to side on the ground, groaning as blood bubbles up from his mouth. He sounds like he's drowning. Friska drags him to his feet again, her hands fisted in his shirt. With an impressive maneuver, hard for the eye to follow unless you're a trained wrestler, she adroitly twists a hand in his hair and reverse hangmans him against the tree branch. Honk. Why won't you just... She slams his throat against the breach again and again. Each time, he lets out a sound like a damaged squeeze toy, his bloated, slimy tongue unspooling like a frog's as all the air is crushed out of his esophagus. DIE! I remember all that. You do? She nods, smiling grimly. That's why I'm out here. You see, the doomed Trezzy... Missed Riska so much. It was like a hole in her heart. I remember the way she felt, because one time all her memories came flooding back. I even got to see what happened when she died. She and another Riska ghost finally found each other. It made me so happy getting to feel that as if, as if it was one of my own memories. It just reinforced the feeling that there was something special between us. And I just kept hanging on to that belief right up until, oh, 
I don't know. Now, I've practically devoted my life to certain memories, to the idea that two people can be meant to be with each other on some cosmic level, even if they always seem to get each other into trouble. All that investment, all that searching, and for what? Over four sweeps together, and she just disappears into the void again. What a huge bitch. Maybe... Parenthesis Vriska thinks for a while on her next statement. Maybe that's why I hated my ghost self so much? Why? Because I just had a sense. On some level, I knew she was right. She was happy and honest with herself, and that's what made her a version of myself who was actually worthy of someone I cared about. Don't get me wrong, we had a nice time for a few years living on that meteor. It was a good, stable, pale relationship, but that's all it was. We couldn't really connect in a deeper way because I was still the way I am, I guess. Layers and layers of armor and defenses. And I had some mysterious feeling that weak ghost version of myself was always meant to form the kind of connection with her that I never could. Because she didn't have any of that stuff getting in the way. Which is probably why I flipped out at her. The person you're talking about here kind of sounds like you love her. What? No. <laughs> okay, whatever. I don't believe this. I mean, maybe? Sort of? It's a complicated feeling. It actually doesn't sound that complicated, but again, whatever. I don't know! I still feel sort of messed up about this, and I don't think I can pinpoint exactly how I feel. Maybe you can't even boil it down to one quadrant at all. Who are we talking about here? I don't think I can talk about this anymore! Oh god, it, it's not my mom, is it? Or one of them? Oh! Fuck no, not them. Anyway, they're living on this planet. Remember I said I'd probably never see her again? Yeah. You're just talking about the girl you blinded that time, aren't you? <laughs> um... Maybe I'm not fucking stupid. I know some lore. Best line in Homestead. <laughs> oh my I god. I know some lore. I know some lore. No, idiot. I give up on Vriska. Terezi says this like someone announcing they've lost their faith in God. You know what this means, don't you? What? You can contact her. Holy shit. Parenthesis Vriska clicks on the reply field. Her thumbs hover over the digital key. What would I even say? Tell her you love her. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but seriously, I have no idea where she is or what she's doing. Is she old now too, like everyone else? That would feel weird. Only one way to find out. Hey, Terezi. This isn't John. It's Vriska.